Paycheck protection fraud is getting way worse, or at least way more people are getting caught. So let's talk about what authorities are now doing regarding these fake fraudulent PPP loans. Some stories that I've come across, just absolutely wild stories about paycheck protection fraud and what people are spending these loans on. Basically, everyone's buying a Lamborghini. It's, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. You know, if you're at least going to steal the money, have some good taste with what you spend that money on, but that's neither here nor there. We're going to talk about some stories and how this affects the general person who was interested in these programs, and it should just be entertaining along the way. So starting off with what authorities are now doing regarding these PPP loans. Let's pop over here. We can see the Department of Justice has prioritized has now prioritized, now that the pandemic is winding down, the prosecution of fraud arising from pay, the Paycheck Protection Program. And this makes total sense because it seems like in the last few weeks, I have seen nothing but article after article about PPP fraud this, this guy got $4 million, this guy got $5 million, he, he bought a Rolex, he bought a Lamborghini. It seems like the amount of people being caught are ramping up dramatically. So it says the Department of Justice is adding more prosecutors to its major fraud unit and focusing on fraudulent loan applications and false statements about employees and payroll. And it's worth noting that even if the fraud was unintentional, there can be significant civil liabilities for doing so. Now, I'm not saying this to worry you if you're a legitimate business and you think a number is wrong or something like that. You have chances to fix that. You're probably gonna be fine. But people who say, I didn't know I was committing fraud could still be at risk. So here's how this happens. Here's how the fraud generally works. You have three spots where you can get caught. The first spot is applying. You know, most of these people are making false bank statements, false business entities. Basically everything is fake. They might even be using a fake name to apply. And you can get caught in that first part it seems like lenders are getting better now at detecting this fraud, but I'm sure there's still you know, businesses that slip through the cracks, but that's the easiest filter to get through. And only some get through that filter. You can get caught there. Chances are if you get caught there, if it's a small loan, you'll just kind of get a slap on the wrist or you'll just be flat out denied. If it's a large loan, then you might be running into some consequences. The next step is forgiveness because no one has received forgiveness yet for the second round of funding, for the second draw of funding in 2021. So we don't know exactly what's going to happen on the forgiveness end with all this fraud that has come out. Forgiveness in the past has been extremely easy. All you do is fill out that one page form if your loan is under $150,000, certify you spent it on the right things, bada bing, bada boom, you get forgiveness. But they don't have to keep it that easy. And if there's suspicion of fraud or other suspicious activity on a loan, they can say, hey, send us some more documentation, send us some receipts, send us some payroll documentation, and then we'll give you forgiveness. And there's absolutely going to be people who are caught on this end. And then they've added one step beyond that, and that is your tax returns. So in order to get these fraudulent loans, a lot of people are submitting just completely fake business entities and fake tax returns. So the IRS is now going to check suspicious loans on their tax returns for 20 21 to make sure the funds were actually spent on that business. So there's now a third spot where people may get caught. Again, for legitimate businesses, you really don't have to worry because it's just going to help your normal business expenses. But for the fraudsters, I wouldn't want to be a fraudster at this point in time because it's just going to be harder and harder to get away with this and you don't know what to expect down the road. And this also doesn't even count on the fact that you're saying that you're making way more money than you ever have before. So the IRS could say, oh, hey, now you're making a hundred grand a year or a million dollars a year. Uh, you owe us taxes on that. Or if you're part of some kind of benefit program, uh, you don't get those benefits anymore because you're making way more money than is allowed in this program. So there's, there's tons of reasons not to be a part of this fraud, but people are doing it nevertheless. And here is a pretty wild story that we can take a look at. At. FinTech CEO pleads, gu pleads guilty to COVID loan frauds. So this 24 year old, he schemed to attempt to steal more than $7 million in PPP loans. And of course, he spent that on a Rolex watch, a $17,000 per month luxury condo, a Mercedes, and other various luxury goods and clothing and things like that. He actually allegedly said that he had more than 200 employees with a total pay of $1.5 million a month in payroll under his businesses. However, those companies actually only had 14 employees. And he actually got $2.8 million deposited into his account. Like there's so many people who can't even get $10,000 with legit businesses. This guy got 2.8 million with a fake business. And he was just so overly confident. And I mean, it's obvious he got caught because he had to make 90 fake employees and he was giving those fake employees the name 
names of former actors, athletes. Like it says, for example, the list of names included a co-anchor on Good Morning America, former NFL player, and a Penn State football coach. I guess he's a big football fan. And of course he got caught and he's gonna be sitting on a large, large sentence. And we have many other stories that are just as crazy or crazier than this. But first I wanna talk about something. It's a little bit off topic. I have a friend of mine who owns a custom woodworking business and I wanna just highlight his business real quick. He doesn't know that I'm doing this, so it's kind of a surprise to him. But here's one of his products that I wanted to highlight. You can get a custom bottle opener with literally anything engraved on it for $15 and I'm pretty sure it's free shipping. It doesn't matter if you wanna get your last name engraved or something obscene and have it sent to your friend. He'll engrave literally anything on these bottle openers and uh, he you know he just owns a small business he's one of my best friends and I really want, just wanted to help him out by kind of highlighting his store here so feel, feel free to check that out I'll have it linked down in the description it'd be pretty funny if uh, if he sees his store just blow up from a bunch of people buying these things uh, from this promo but anyways moving on to the next story here New York City man charged with nearly four million dollars in COVID relief fraud scheme and money laundering and he actually obtained $3.8 million from that. So like, you can only receive 5 million, and he got 3.8 million. It's absolutely crazy. So he submitted eight falsified loan applications to numerous lenders on behalf of five businesses. And what he did with that money, he didn't buy Lamborghinis, he didn't buy a Rolex. Nope, he placed more than $3 million on stock trades. <laughs> and they really kind of did him dirty here because they said losing stock trades. So not only did he buy stocks, but he bought losing stock trades. And of course, he's caught and he's being charged with eight counts of wire fraud and six counts of money laundering with a maximum penalty of 20 years in prison for each count of wire fraud and 10 years in prison for each count of money laundering. <laughs> not a situation I would want to be in. Next, we have this community that is kind of crazy. It's a small town in New Jersey who saw dozens of paycheck protection loans to supposedly farms in this beach town community. And some of the farm names were just kind of like wild names, like kind of obviously fake. Ritter Wheat Club, Dealey Nuts, Tomato Kramer. And there was one that was called Beefy King, supposedly a cattle ranch that had the same address as the mayor of the town. So someone made this fake business, Beefy King, <laughs> kind of ridiculous name, and then attributed the address to the mayor. It's like, they think they're gonna get away with this. And I guess all of these non-existent businesses went through Cabbage, who was very popular in the first round of PPP funding. But this gave me an idea, gave me an idea, because there's a lot of suspicious names, there's obviously a lot of PPP loan fraud, but we have this service here that will show you every single PPP loan funded. So, what I wanted to allow people to do, I'll have this link down in the description, search your zip code and see if there's any suspicious loans here. And if there is a business that just seems suspicious or you know isn't in a location where it says it is, you could report it and potentially get some more money to a legitimate business. Just something to think about. We got a couple more stories here. Florida man, it's always a Florida man. Sentence after fraudulently obtaining $3.9 million in PPP loans. And what did he buy with those PPP loans? A $318,000 Lamborghini. It's always a Lamborghini. And of course, he submitted multiple PPP applications claiming he had dozens of employees and millions of dollars a month in payroll. And he also submitted false IRS forms to substantiate those applications, probably fake tax returns or payroll reports, things like that. But you know what, this guy was a share. Sharing is caring. He also helped assist other individuals in obtaining fraudulent PPP loans as well. But of course, he got caught. They probably got caught as well. And he's been sentenced. So there you go. And then next we have one that's a little bit more grounded and might be a little bit more relatable because these aren't multi-million dollar fake loans. These are small loans under $20,000 that were caught at an apartment complex. So there was eight residents at this apartment complex who received in, in total just over $100,000, so less than $20,000 each. And each of these pe people basically said they had some kind of small business that you know had an adjusted gross income somewhere around $100,000 so they could get close to that maximum loan amount. Well, they were caught because this is a public housing apartment and they have to report their income because it's a subsidized apartment so the people who manage the apartments were like hey you got twenty thousand dollars from this pvp loan and you didn't report it what's going on here you don't even own a business so of course they got caught and this is what i was mentioning earlier a lot of people don't think about the fact that you're reporting that you're making way more money than you've ever made before so there goes your government programs as soon as they find out about that because you know in 2021 
governments now communicate with each other. So things are going to flow from one to another. Well, these people got caught and it seems they either had the option to return the funds or face the music and I guess roll the dice here. But uh, yeah, they're going to get caught. And then one more we wanted to highlight here. Man fraudulently obtained $5 million in PPP loans. Of course, bought a Ferrari, other cars. <laughs> But a, but a Ferrari, Bentley, and a Lamborghini. So this guy was like, Lamborghini, not enough. Let me get a Ferrari, Lamborghini, and a Bentley because that's how I should spend my PPP loan money. And of course, he got caught. He, he basically claimed he had four companies in Newport Beach. None of them were actually his companies. And he also did so under someone else's name and social security number. So it was like fraud on top of fraud on top of fraud. It was a, it was like a, a in and out double, double, double of, <laughs> of fraud. So there you go. It. The fraudsters are getting caught. They are buckling down more and more on these fraud programs. I'm happy to see it. It's still entertaining to see all of these people get caught. And I'm glad that that money will then go to legitimate businesses. So it's kind of a relief to, to see that as well. It's satisfying to see that they get caught. They get caught because of all this. So that's going to do it. Check out all the links down in the description. Grab some free stocks, grab some free crypto, buy a bottle opener from my good buddy for only 15 bucks. I would like to thank you for watching and I hope you have a profitable day.